the introduction to the Live Learn blockchain. This is Robert Nozick, Dr. Robert Nozick, by the way. He's one of the inspirations for the concept of Live Learn, and also, in a way, inspiration for the conceptual uh, setup of the Live Learn blockchain. Because ours is a blockchain with a mission, and the mission is to run the governance and the economy of the freest country in the world. So we have to keep that in mind that we are also buying into an idea or coming into an idea if you if we are coming into that blockchain. So that's interesting. It's not agnostic. It's a freedom blockchain. Technologically, it's substrate based, as you well know by now. And unlike all the other chains in substrate or elsewhere, we have a division of power, which is also something this man would approve of. And so we have a division of power between the validators who hold the liberal and dollars which are the governance token proper in the sense of blockchain. And that means that you hold the power to physically change by, by forking uh, the system, like to brute force it. Yeah? So that, that, what, that's what gives you the power is LLD. However, we, the way how the decision-making process is governed is not by LLD, it's by a different token, it's by LLM. Why would you want to have that? Because if you unify it and all the other blockchains tend to do that, you effectively have those who make decisions to be the same people as those who count the votes. And vote counting can lead to shenanigans. We don't want that in Liberal. We don't want our system to be untransparent. So this is a political reason and a good reason, freedom reason why to have these two tokens. So where are we? We are everywhere, but besides that, we have a GitHub repository where everybody can see the code. It's MIT uh, license, it's open source. You can even copy it and make your own level on blockchain if you wish wish to do so. Uh, I can give you the main net link and the test net link. If you want to build on it, if you want to join us, feel free. It is We're not advertising ourselves from the rooftops right now, but we are open for business. And we have a front end and we have social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram, all the other, not yet, but that's a good, that's a good place to also go to, I think, uh, Discord even and whatever. And we are announcing our own things, uh, our own announcements on our own platforms. So feel, stay tuned. You'll get so, soon big news because we're preparing this whole crypto platform and we're going to communicate everything clearly with pictures and videos and everything. So what's the situation of uh, on the technology side? The node, which is like, you know how blockchains work. You are, it's, it's a notebook, everybody has a copy and that copy is called a node. And so the node technically is uh, built on substrate and it works a lot like Polkadot. So if you want to build on us, you can. All you need to know is to know how to build on Polkadot and that's very well documented. Plus some additions into which Dorian and Casper, our developers are, are very happily going to initiate you, but that's not much. So basically, all you need to do know is to know Polkadot. And the big difference is that in Polkadot, there is no division of power. Just like we said, they are following the majority, uh, which is not always right, as Dr. Robert Nozick would also agree with. And uh, therefore, we have no governance on LLD, whereas they do have governance on DOT. And so for them, the vote counters are the same people as those who make decisions. Uh, we have something called ideal stake ratio, Polkadot uh, originated principle, which um, motivates you to stake your LLD. If you stake your LLD, you will maintain uh, the security of our network. The more people hold LLD, the lower the chance that somebody will do the shenanigans I mentioned at the beginning. So like, brute forcing a fork or something like that. So feel free to join us. And it's of course not something that you do just out of the kindness of your heart, but you gain more LLD this way. This is how you. This is how we actually emit LLD. LLD, unlike with the central bank where you have the primary monetary supply and secondary, and basically the bank gets it and then uh, the biggest loan takers get the first money. You know, you always want to get the first money, right? Before the money gets into accounted into the economy because that money has more value. So uh, by us, the nominators and the validators get the first money. 
first LLD rather, and that can be used very easily. How to be a validator? We have a very simple guide on our blockchain Wikipedia already. We have a very good uh, community on Matrix, which will actually do it for you. All you need is six or seven dollars per month. That's not so much. And you can you will establish your own virtual machine on digital ocean. And then uh, you will either follow the guide, which I did twice already, and I'm no this, and it, it was super easy. Or you ask our this who will make it super easy for you. He's done it like 20 times and he's ready to help you. And so you can, without work and without much investment, if you're a citizen already, uh, become a validator of a full-blown blockchain. I think this is the easiest blockchain, actually, to validate on the market. I would be happy to be proven otherwise, but I think this is the lowest lowest uh, cost ever, probably, <laughs> how to become a validator. And you will get rewards, and you will get more steady and stable rewards than as a nominator. And of course, we'll be very happy for another full node. So how does this whole thing work? I've spoken about LLM. That's the one token which does make the decision. That's the division of power. Well, that token is something else. It's not inflationary. It's deflationary. It has a, a maximum cap. This cap is based on the land of Liberland, actually. And th that land is absolutely scarce. And so our token is scarce. We don't release it all at once. Why? Because we don't want anyone to be able to buy all of Liberland all at once for one. And for another, we would like the economy to adjust to the new well, money. I'll call it money. It's not really money. It's a token of your membership, let's say. It's a state token. Uh, but it could be seen as a money because everything that has value is fungible can be used as money. So 10% per year of the remaining supply gets released. A simple example, 70 million in year zero, 63 million in year one, and so on and so forth. Who manages this uh, money? It gets released into two places, basically. One is your hands as a validator, our newest validator, or the nominator if you really don't want to uh, pay the seven euros to DigitalOcean or whatever. That's one part, and uh, the closer you are to the, as I spoke, ideal stake ratio, remember, 75%, uh, the closer we get to that, the more you get. Actually, if you are on that ratio, if we are on that ratio, you get everything. And then there is the treasury, that's the country treasury, state treasury, that's the politicians you're voting with the same LLM, uh, they will manage that state treasury. They can use it to run Liberland, they can use it to award uh, supporters, and they can use it to even issue grants like Polkadot Foundation, like uh, Web3 Foundation for builders, if you want. And that is managed by on-chain politics, which is remarkably similar to Polkadot in this one aspect, or will be. We're still building that. We're building the budgetary function. Now there is a simplified version of it, very streamlined, very lean, very efficient. So what's politpooling? There were people who said something about plutocracy. And so that's an uh, objection which could be expected, but which is based on lack of knowledge. So let me inform you. You can't buy votes in Liberland. That's impossible. Why? Because if you buy LLM, it would be like buying votes by LLM, right? Well, wrong, because your LLM don't allow you to vote. Not if you buy them in a transferable form, which you can just immediately flip and make a quick buck. So if you ape into Liberland, you can't vote. What you do instead is that you commit your LLM into Liberland for a long-term vesting or staking, one might say, which we call polit pooling, political pooling. And the pooled LLM, they can vote. And they have this magical <laughs> code ability that you can vote on more referenda at once, which is a big difference from Polkadot, where you, you have to like use this economy between referenda and people can game the system like this. So we wanted to make it more politic-like. So if I, there are five referenda, you can use one LLM to vote in all five. That's cool. Only once per referendum, though. So if you vote twice in a referendum, your new vote will replace the old votes. This, this is already how it's programmed. Yeah. And just like the, uh, uh, the investing schedule into the treasury, if you remember, previous slide, your own bullet pool tokens, if you want to sell them, you can, but there is a slow as snail uh, schedule of 10% per year 
uh, payable monthly, so one twelfth of one one ten of ten percent, which in which you get the LLMs to your wallet, to the other section of your wallet. Let's say uh, it's a, it's a liquid LLM, and then it's like there's a bullet pool LLM. So you have two two types of LLM. It's all in your wallet, by the way. There is no custodial solution anywhere in the system. We're not a custodial party. We don't want to be because we don't like custodial parties. We don't like them so much that we're probably going to list first on a DEX rather than on a central, centralized exchange. So it's like, it's actually from your one pocket to the other pocket, but this pocket is like soon shut. And you can only get one tenth per, uh, of, of, the, of the content per year to be released and so. So it's a commitment, it's a long-term commitment, but it's not an eternal commitment. You can always, like, it's still your funds. And you can vote with it. How do you do that? Uh, well, first of all, we are a direct democracy. We do have strong and powerful elements of representative democracy, that's very true. But laws are passed by you, not by some politician. You decide, and you also propose laws. Politicians can also propose laws, and they are important, but the core process is centered on the citizen. So much that the core organ of the legislative power, and remember division of powers, it's actually the citizens themselves. You vote by your tokens. So if you want to enact a measure, you vote using uh, your tokens. So you have eff effectively as, much, as many votes as you have tokens. It's not headcount. This is because we want to uh, qualify um, sort of the voter competency uh, by voter commitment. So the more you sacrifice for the country, the more you commit, the more work you do for us and for this whole project, for yourself actually, for your country, the more you make it happen, the more votes you get. And in this way, we're, we're about to rectify something which is happening in startup states, that I can give you concrete examples, where people who were heroes, who did a lot for the country, became taxi drivers. Yeah, and, and they got handouts. We don't believe in that at all. So if you commit, you get the power that this deserves. And again, to those exception, to, to those objections about uh, the plutocracy and whatever, there is a head counted vote and it's a powerful one. We call it public veto. It's just that you don't enact anything by this. No, you remove. And you remove what? You remove laws, regulations, even regulations, so you cannot have a tyranny of sublegal uh, sub uh, ordinances, just like we've seen during COVID in my country, where the law said one thing, but the ordinances said other thing, and they waited until the, ju the judiciary would strike them down, then they reapply them again. Like, we don't care. It's the virus. We don't care about legality, no. We do care about legality, and you do care. And to the effect to which you care, you can, say no. And if 51% of all the possible voters say no to a ordinance or a law regulation, it gets strict, struck out that very instant. And that's had counted. That's even the poorest citizen, as long as they have political power. Uh, and they can also remove corrupt officials, like judges. Judges would be for life, normally speaking, but there is a way how to get rid of them. And we speak of the representative democracy. So, Imagine that you're a busy liberal under living in liberal land and you, you, you own two businesses and you really don't are not interested in agricultural policy, such as there is in liberal land, probably not much. But there is a referendum about that. Well, what do you do? You can vote and basically effectively it's a coin toss. Like you are a high power, high effectivity individual, but you just don't understand this. So what do you do? You vote it in election for another liberal under who is getting paid for taking care, understanding of all kinds of policy. And that's your congressman. And so what you can do is that you can give your referendum vote, say for that one referendum about agriculture, because you understand everything else, you can give it to that trusted representative and he will vote or she will vote for you. And then you give, get your vote back. Yeah? Or you can even give them pro tempora, like for a time, you can give that vote to them for a time, for a month, for a year, however long you want to have a peace of mind and for however long you trust this third party, this person, this congressman of yours. If you stop trusting them, that moment you can take that uh, vote back. Now compare this with our current systems of politics. Can you do that? No, you can't. You have to wait four years, five years at worst if, if, if they stop 
if you stop trusting them immediately after you voted them into office, which happens quite often in certain countries. So this is quite a level up, I would say. We are here, we have launched for public. We, have, we are bridging ourselves to other chains for the purpose of joining DEXIS, just like we spoke of yesterday, perhaps even to Sora, first of all to Ethereum, because everybody's there. We will have a basic judiciary. We have already registries running in sort of an MVP version. You can join in, you can register your company there, you can register ships, soon vehicles. And we are ready to onboard the first builders. So if you know some builders or are a builder, please come for us. We like builders, we're searching for builders. Please, please join us. And we want to join the community of which the first step is this conference, right? The Dotsama. Dotsama means like Polkadot, uh, for those who don't. Uh, yeah, it, it's, a, it's kind of a 2022 word. I haven't, I haven't heard it spoken once in the Polkadot decoded in Copenhagen, by the way. They're now speaking to the people in audience from Polkadot. So I, if you can explain it to me later, that would be go good, but I still call it Dotsama. And soon we're going to create a judiciary. And that's going to be a huge milestone. It's not just about having a country judiciary. No, no, no. It's about enabling you to run real economy, your deals safely on our blockchain. Uh, you will be able to get recourse for any cheating, shenanigans, sloppy work or whatever. You don't have to wait on your country to adjudicate your process. And best of all, you can use the organs of your country or the country of the person who did the sloppy job to get a recourse even if there is no collateral. And I can tell you about it if you ask questions or during my next uh, presentation, which will be about that. And last but not least, uh, when that is done, we will create a supporting infrastructure. We will create uh, the marketplace for judges where uh, legal professionals will be able to offer their services on our blockchain, opening a whole new possibility. We will create a, a mediator function, arbitration function, and insurances so that you can have a judiciary insurance like in the Netherlands or in other countries, we call it a rechtbeistand where I live. And that is that you don't have to pay your attorney, uh, but you pay a small small monthly fee or something like that, uh, which will enable our uh, system to work. We can even have a jury of, of, of your peers, but that is future future and that is that, that concerns a criminal justice but we first want to create in the ethos of libertarianism the civil law part the part where you can deal with each other in freedom uh using free will to help each other to increase each other's value in this magical magical process called transaction and we want to enable this fully in liberal and as liberal and is getting founded thank you for your attention